How's it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today, we're going to be discussing a rare Canadian quarter era from the year 1999 that you probably had no idea even existed. Because these errors only have a few known examples currently and have only recently been discovered, these are quarters that you may actually have a decent chance of finding and I guarantee that their value is only exceeded by their rarity. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of this rare and valuable 25 cent coin and delve into why it holds such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss any distinguishing and identifying features and significance among collectors and also the potential value if you happen to own or find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. And make sure to stay to the end of the video if you'd like to find out how much you could actually get for this coin if you own or find one. And then without any further ado, what do you say we get right into it and discuss the Canadian 1999 September Overstrike Quarters. Let's get it, guys. The Canadian Millennium Quarter Series, released in the years 1999 and 2000, was a remarkable numismatic project initiated by the Canadian Mint. It began with the Millennium Coin Design Contest, which was announced in April 1998, which invited Canadians to submit designs for 24 quarters, one for each month spanning the two years. The aim was to commemorate the turn of the millennium by celebrating Canada's past and looking towards its future. The series was divided into two parts. The 1999 quarters were designed to reflect Canada's history while the 2000 millennium quarters looked ahead to the future. Each of these different coins bore a unique design representing a particular aspect of Canadian heritage or culture. The 1999 quarters were labeled with the retrospective month of issue and showcased various themes significant to Canada's past. These included the country's growth and development, its natural wonders, and its cultural diversity. The designs ranged from depictions of historical events to symbols of Canada's natural beauty and the contributions of its indigenous peoples. Following the success of the 1999 series, the Canadian Mint continued the project into the year 2000 with a focus on themes representing Canada's future. These themes ranged from technological advancements to social progress and environmental stewardship. Upon release, these coins were widely circulated and became cherished collectibles, appealing not only to numismatists, but also to those Canadians eager to commemorate the milestone of the new millennium. The series captured the imagination of the nation and served as a reflection of Canada's identity and aspirations as it entered the 21st century. The Canadian Millennium Quarter Series is a true testament to the MIT's commitment to commemorating significant moments in Canadian history and culture through the artistry of coinage. It remains a cherished part of Canada's numismatic history, offering a glimpse into the country's past and also hopes for the future. Now what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here to find out about? The 1999 Canadian Millennium Quarter series included a rare air known as the September Overstrike, although it's more accurately described as a die clash. This air is characterized by an unusual counter clash die mark on the reverse side of the coin, specifically affecting the extreme right of the child's triangle in the Through a Child's Eye September design. Counterclash marks can also be visible in some of the other surrounding areas, but are much more lighter, and you will typically find the main die clash in the center of the child on the right side of the reverse of the coin. A type 2 counter die clash such as this occurs when a die strikes a piece of hard metal within the striking chamber. This could be a fragment of a die, a collar, a stray nut, or any other hard object. The initial strike leaves a die struck design on the metal fragment. If the fragment shifts position within the striking chamber and it is struck again, the second strike transfers the design back to the die face, typically just the field portion. As a result, the die face now carries an in-cuse mirror image version of the design. Every planchette struck after this will have raised, normally-oriented design elements in an unexpected location. 
The rarity of the September overstrike lies in its unusual nature and the fact that it's a die clash error specifically affecting a limited number of the coins in the 1999 Millennium Quarter series. The air coins with this counter clash mark are highly sought after by collectors due to their uniqueness and the intriguing story behind their creation. Collectors value air coins for their rarity and this September overstrike is definitely no exception. These coins often command higher prices in the numismatic market, especially among those specializing in air coin collecting. The specific design and theme of the Through a Child's Eye September Quarter makes this air particularly fascinating to collectors and it adds an extra layer of interest to an already distinctive design. So anyone out there who has a birthday in September and is into coin collecting may be extra keen to acquire one of these. Identifying the September Overstrike Air in the Canadian 1999 Millennium Quarter series involves recognizing specific characteristics on the reverse side of the coin, particularly in the design element representing the through a child's eye. Now here are some of the key features to look for to identify this Overstrike or Die Clash Air. Counter Clash Marks the most distinguishing feature of the September Overstrike is the presence of counter clash marks, which appear as NQ's mirror image versions of the design. These marks are typically located around the child on the right's triangle in the design. They may also be visible in other surrounding areas, but are usually lighter. You also want to look for unusual placement of design elements. Due to the counter clash, the raised design elements on the coin may appear in unexpected locations. In the case of this September overstrike, the child's triangle may show raised elements in places where they should not be according to the original design. Comparison with normal coins. To confirm this error, it's helpful to compare the coin in question with the normal version of the September Millennium Quarter. This allows for a side-by-side -side comparison to identify any differences in the design, particularly the placement of the design elements or the absence or presence of these counter clash marks in the small triangle on the child on the right side of the reverse. Certification by experts. For any serious collectors or investors, obtaining certification from a reputable grading service or an expert in air coins can provide additional confirmation on the coin's authenticity and classification, such as the September overstrike error. Documentation and historical context. Understanding the background of coin errors such as this, including how it occurred and its rarity, can help you appreciate the significance of rare air pieces such as this. This information can be found in numismatic literature, online forums, or through reputable dealers, but if you guys would like to find out more about Canadian coins, I definitely suggest that you go check out my website, northcentralcoins.com. I have my coin roll match for sale on there, as well as weekly articles that are updated, and if you want to find information that is not necessarily here on my YouTube channel, then I definitely suggest you go check that out. Now some of the details and specifications for this piece, if any of these are off, it may indicate that it is not an authentic example. The overall mintage figure for the September 1999 Millennium Series quarter is 31,077,650 and the Overstrike Air will be within that. It is composed of 100% nickel, it has a die axis in metal alignment as is the standard for most Canadian, British and Australian coins. It has a weight of 5.05 grams and a diameter of 23.88 millimeters. Now, as we get into the values for the September 1999 Overstrike coin, it does have a low end premium. You're not going to get rich off of finding one of these in a beat up shape, but I would say if you find one and it's at the bottom of the Sheldon scale, you can still probably get anywhere from five to ten dollars, especially if it has very noticeable die clashes where it should, which is within the triangle on the child on the right side of the reverse of the coin. But if it can score around the AU50 mark, it can be worth around $25. Now, as we start to get into the MS range, this coin can be worth around $85 for an MS62 and the highest auction record that I was able to find is $300 for an MS64. If you're able to find one out of an uncirculated roll and it scored any higher, I don't doubt that you could easily get anywhere from $500 to $1,000. That might be one of your best chances to find one of these at this point. It's just to buy some uncirculated rolls of these September 1999 quarters, bust them open, and if you have just a few of these die clash errors, then you have hit the jackpot. But the good news about these errors is usually when you buy an uncirculated roll, 
Either all of the coins inside will have them or none of them will. So it is a bit of a gamble, but definitely an interesting one to take in the world of coin collecting. Now, what do you guys think about the 1999 September Overstrike Canadian Quarters? What would you do if you ever found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins that I discussed in this video, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.